Hey there, everybody. Welcome into the ESPN FC studio. Steve Nichols, Stuart Robson, and Mark Ogden with us here for extra time. <clears throat> Stevie, how are you? I'm all right. Thanks. Just all right? <laughs> <laughs> That was a pretty easy show today. Bish bash that? bosh, as Dan Thomas would say. You don't think you anything else to come out with? No. No. Uh, just <laughs> checking the temperature. <laughs> checking the temperature. First question is for you. Oh. Um, who does Steve think will win the Celtic Rangers match? Rangers, of course. <laughs> the team That's in, your team, right? The team your team of your childhood? Well, it is my team, but <laughs> since they made the change of manager, mm -hmm. um, they've just... They've, <laughs> they've, they've gone up a gear. Uh, and unfortunately for Celtic, they've gone the opposite way. So there's no question that the favourites are Rangers. And I absolutely hope Rangers win. Comfortably, I hope. Craig was adamant that you're not supposed to say old firm derby. You're just supposed to say old firm. Is that true? No? That's a burly thing? No idea. Okay. Well, he made said. it seem like it was a cardinal sin. I wouldn't have said it, would I? <laughs> Natum's interior decorator. For Mark, as a journalist, have you ever done an interview with a player or coach that afterwards had affected your perception about them, either positively or negatively? Ooh. Um, well, yeah, I mean, listen, generally, if somebody gives you their time to speak to you, you generally come away thinking, actually, they're, they're not as bad as, uh, as I thought. So I'm, I'm struggling to think of... Uh, I, I, I thought Jose Mourinho was, was quite cold, actually. So on the flip side, I thought he was... Mm. I thought he'd have a bit more charisma, a bit more kind of effervescent, shall we say, and he was just not interested. This was, this was on the summer tour. This was at, um, over at uh, UCLA back in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. and he was just... didn't want to be there. Jurgen Klopp, I, I always find quite good. He can be quite grumpy at times. He can be quite difficult, but when he's good, he's really good and he's really pleasant. So, yeah, I think if they're in a good mood, I think you come away thinking, actually, these, these guys are OK. Um, never interviewed Stevie or Stewie, so I'm not quite sure what they were like, but um, mm. yeah, I'll leave that one there. How are you with the press? How are you with the press? Straightforward. Really? Straightforward. You didn't let your personality come out? I don't know, you'd have to ask them, I just... Yeah. Did you get on with the media? What was the... Because it's Aye. different times. Aye. I think now it's very, like, combative. Yeah, no, I, I just... Listen, there was, there was a couple of times when... when some of them got up my nose, but I would just tell them, and they seemed to take it. And the next time I had anything to do with them, we were kind of normal. I think you should probably ask Oggy this. I think, I think journalists would rather you were just straightforward and were to the point, mm -hmm. and then that way you know where you stand. Mm. Oggy, would it be right, Oggy? That right? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know. It's different nowadays because a lot of players are, are getting to players is so much harder now because they're surrounded mm. by club media officers, their own PR teams. I, you know, the United team that I covered a lot, you're talking um, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you got to know those players and, you know, you still see them now and we're all kind of getting old and grey and we still bump into each other at times and, and you'll chat about things. And it's almost like you build a rapport with these people, these players, because you, you kind of... You spent time with them, you spoke to them in after games in a mix zone or in, a, in an interview. Nowadays, it's so much harder for journalists coming through because it's so hard to get time with players and they're so suspicious of you because they've seen something on TikTok or on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And it's, it's hard, but yeah, I mean, you do want a, a normal relationship with people. You just want them to be honest and to be blunt if they have to be and, and front you up. There's nothing worse than players sulking because they think you've done something you haven't or, or vice versa. So yeah, just, just be normal people and just, just front people up. That's the best way to deal with people. Next question for Stevie and Robbo. We'll start with you, Stuart. In the FA Cup game, Endo, McAllister, and Soboslai dominated United's midfield in the second half. But with all of United's injuries in defense, do you think Liverpool will have more of an advantage in midfield or up front? What do you think, Robbo? Uh, they're going to have the advantage in midfield because they're better players and they've got more energy. They're, they're a much better team in midfield than Manchester United are. So they're going to have an advantage there. Uh, and it depends in who they play up front. I think Nunez is in good form at the moment. Diaz is playing well. Salah needs to just slightly improve his form, but all over the pitch, I have to say, Liverpool are better than Manchester United, so that's uh, that's going to be key to it. I'd ask if you agree, but... Well, yeah, because if, if you're in charge in the middle of the park, regardless of how good your front players are, they're going to get the ball. So, yeah, I would agree with Robbo, the middle of the park. And I think... I think probably 
Probably Augie would be the best man to ask here, but I thought Manu looked really, really jaded at Chelsea. I don't know whether recent the amount of games and playing for England and the whole thing. Maybe hitting a wall, you think? Is physically caught up with him. I, th I just thought he looked really. Do you see really that, Augie? Wild. Yeah, but Ten Hag has got a problem in the sense that he's the only one that he can rely on to be fit and to, and to, to last the game. I mean, Casemiro, for me, has just suddenly looked really old and he's just looking like he's. He's miles off the pace, so he can't rest Maynu and play Casemiro because he can't trust Casemiro. Christian Eriksen's kind of dropped off the radar a little bit recently, so, you know, Kobe Maynu is the only guy that you can actually trust to, to actually get through a game, but you're right, I mean, he, he, it looks like he's feeling the heat right now, and I think he needs a bit of support around him, but he's not really getting that because the players that should be there, you know, Amrabat's not really appeared for a while, so Amrabat, Eriksen, Casemiro, who do you trust of those three to, to fill in for Kobe Maynu? You can't really trust any of them, so... He's stuck with having to play him, even though he probably wants to rest him. Augie, we touched on this in the show. Who'd be your best bet on who'll probably take over for Ten Hag this summer? <laughs> well, <sighs> Gareth Southgate has got a really good chance. He knows people at the club, the people at the club like him, certainly the new regime that are there right now. But obviously there's an issue at the moment with the, with the Euros. But United can't afford to wait until the end of the summer. <sighs> I'm not sure he's the guy they should be waiting for anyway, but if I had to say right now who I think it will be, I think it's more likely to be Gareth Southgate than Eric Ten Hag, but I think if they had a real choice of anyone, I think they should take Robert, Roberto De Zerbi, I think. He's an obvious candidate, he's what they need to shake up the squad, but I think the, the safe money is Gareth Southgate. As a Liverpool fan, Stevie, your reaction to Manchester United going with Gareth Southgate would Yes, be... please, and twice <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that, is that straightforward yeah, enough for you? Yeah, exactly, straightforward, <laughs> honest, <you> yeah. <laughs> uh, next question for Robbo. Does Cole Palmer have a higher upside than Foden or Saka? Does he have a greater upside? Well, uh, up until recent times when uh, Saka's been injured and he didn't play particularly well uh, in the game against Man City, uh, Saka has been magnificent both for England and Arsenal. So he's got so many things that he can do. He can also go down the outside and get crosses in with his right foot. He can cut inside, play little one-twos, score goals. So he's an outstanding player. Of course he is. Uh, but you look at the other two uh, that you just mentioned. Foden's in the form of his life at the moment. He's playing as well as he possibly can. Uh, he didn't play that well against Arsenal, but he was crowded out in that game. Uh, and when you talk about Cole Palmer, he's sort of a languid sort of runner with the ball, but he's also a, a good uh, little player of one-twos. He can score goals. All three are, are, are great players at the moment. Who I would pick as the main one would probably be Foden, then in, on current form, Cole Palmer, and Saka just behind them because he's been slightly injured. Okay. Of those three, highest upside, Stevie? Highest upside. Well, I'm with, again, I'm with Robo Foden. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I think Saka's a better player than Palmer mm -hmm. right now. Um, I just, I just wonder if Cole Palmer's going to. It's very easy to forget that he's still learning the game. But as as much as he scored a hat trick yesterday, I think I said previously that. He disappears out of games a lot. Now, whether that's to do with the team he's playing for, it could be that as well. But if he can figure out how to play for 90 minutes and be involved for more time in the 90 minutes, then he could be fantastic. But right now, I think Foden's the best of the three. Okay. Next question is for me. Seb, are you going to put an ESPN FC team together for the TST tournament? Who makes your starting seven? So the, the TST tournament is obviously, it's a seven on seven tournament here in the United States with a million dollar cash prize. It's actually gonna be on ESPN Plus this year. Our colleague Ali Krieger is playing like in that. the women's tournament. I'm just giving people context for Why the question. Talk, you're looking at me, talk to me like that. Well, I'm just giving- I know, I know exactly what Oh, you do? You know about the TST? I didn't know you, were all, you, were, you knew all about that. All right, so help me make this- They're on the show. What are you talking about? Look, yesterday you announced something. Oh, you did something with Ali? Yesterday? No. The last <laughs> tournament they had, we did it on the show all the time. Really? Rex on batter in the US, 12-0. That's, that's that was, yeah, called. that was last year, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So they're doing that again this year. <laughs> are you, first of all, are you going to be on our seven-a-side team? Don't be stupid. <laughs> stupid. 
I don't know whether you could get seven people that I don't know. I mean, they could run. Let me let me throw some names I'm, out I at you. I don't know the role. Ali, can run Ali Moreno's in, right? Ali's in great Ali couldn't run when he was playing. I mean, well, relative to. Huh. I don't think Robo can run. Augie's not no. on that. Uh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going to sit here and let you trash Augie. I played football with Augie in Qatar, and he's got a nose for goal. I don't think Augie could run. That's, that was my bonus. He's got, a nose, he's got a nose for a lot of things. I'm not sure it's goals. <laughs> <laughs> he's a... Um, mobility yeah, was not his strength. He was, a, he, was, he was a poacher, though. So uh, Could you get seven? I mean, Augie, Jules, Jules Nadem. Jules Laurent. Nadem. Nadem. Jules is a good, very good player, okay. and he's in very good shape. Ale, Augie, Jules, Nadem. Can we throw Shaka in goal? Does he, would he count? As, like, we, he's a big body. I mean, he don't have to do too much. He can't move. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a six, and I'm not in good, very good shape right now. My back's terrible. I, I don't know if we have a I don't know if we have a starting seven. Yeah, I didn't think we did. Burley out of retirement. Yeah. You out of retirement. Uh, it may as well be a billion dollar. Prize money. Yeah. We ain't getting that. Mar no. What about yeah. Mario Melchior? Oh, yeah, Mario. That's Mario, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you know uh, who's been on Luis the show Garcia. recently who's in great shape? Luis Garcia, Jürgen Klinsmann. Jürgen still Jürgen plays, still plays a, Sunday, a lot, yeah. yeah. Jürgen I, played against my mate last week. You know what? I'm not I'm not minding our chances now as I start to fill out the roster. I'll tell you one bet. You got no chance. Okay. No you, <laughs> you just disrespect me at every turn. For Mark, what percentage of United supporters Place the blame for yesterday's <laughs> loss on Moore. Eric Ten Hag or the players? All right, so how, we, how do we break down the, the blame pie? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one because there's, there's a, there is a split. I mean, there's a split of, of fans in the sense that they blame the players for everything in the sense that it's always the players that have got rid of managers. So there's a feeling that Ten Hag has been let down by a group of players that always let managers down. But ultimately, Ten Hag is a guy that you know, made, made the team selections, decided the tactics, made the changes that he did during the game, which kind of take, took the momentum away. Didn't spot the fact that United were playing keep ball with five minutes to go and they were actually making any attacking passes. So I, th I think you're probably looking at the majority are now blaming Ten Hag, but there's still a large, a large minority that, f that feel that he deserves a pass because of the players that he's working with. So, but I think last night was one of those where it keeps happening. So it's got to be the coach, it can't be the players all the time. You can't, here's the thing. You absolutely, the fact that they didn't win the game, I'm sorry, the fact that they lost the game is 100% on the players. Because had all 11 of them, 11 of them, by the way, not one of them, 11 of them, had all 11 of them been alive for the, for the corner kick, they wouldn't have lost the game. Ten Hag wasn't picking anybody up at corners or wasn't organising anybody at corners. It's down to the players. So they wouldn't have lost the game. But for the players, 100%. So when it's set piece stuff, when it's that like concentration stuff, it's not down to the coach. He can't do anything about What is he supposed to do about that? Nothing. Good question here. For all, your favourite football player of all time. Players. Bravo. Players. players, players. Yeah, as many as you oh. like. Your favourites, Bravo. I tell you what, I played against a player, a Romanian, Georgie Hadji. He was a magnificent Ooh, player. Wow. He was at a great left foot. He could go past people. He was an inspiration at that particular time. Um, in England, I would say I liked Brian Robson. He was a, he was a, every, you either liked Brian Robson or Glenn Hoddle in the in the in the eighties. I liked Brian Robson because he affected games more than anybody else. And of course. An old Liverpool player, Graham Souness, was was excellent both with and without the ball, and he could look after himself as well for Liverpool. So they're three players that I really admired. Go on, Stevie, your your faves. Well, I'm going old school because right. as soon as I read as soon as I read this, I was thinking about when I was a kid. I mean, that's really when you have favourite footballers, right? When you're yeah. a kid, as you're an mm. adult, it kind of yeah, it changed. You might appreciate people, but it's yeah. I mean, Willie Henderson played for Rangers. I'm a Rangers man. Okay, George Best. Dennis Law, I mean that's that. They were guys that I, I looked up to. Is Kenny, there one that Kenny you... Dalglish? I remember going and watching Dalglish playing at Air United for Celtic when I was maybe the seventies. I'd probably be about twelve or thirteen. Air United was your first club, yeah. Air United was my first club, yeah. So I kind of go. I'm I'm going to go further back. Okay. I mean Maradona, Pele, obvious. But they were your contemporaries. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it's different. If I would go with one, I would go with Maradona. Just because you enjoyed watching him. 
I've said it a thousand times. The fact that he did what he did in the time that he was playing, when you could rattle people round the neck. And they rattled him. And get a yellow card for it and not get sent off. I mean, this guy this guy had to jump six foot in the air every time he went, was challenged. And the fact that he was able to still do what he did under those circumstances, that's, that's for me why he was just frightening. Plus, he got one over on England. That never hurts. Doesn't always it? always helps. <laughs> in the resume from a Steve uh, Nichol perspective. Um, Augie, what about you? Who are your favourites coming up? Or now? Yeah, so, modern era. I, I still go for Cristiano Ronaldo. Pete Ronaldo. So I think he was absolutely brilliant. Great goal scorer. He was fantastic for 10, 12 years for Man United and Real Madrid. So, I think Ronaldo, for me, is just one of the, obviously one of the greatest of all time. But if you're going back to when I was a kid, I think the first player that really, really caught my attention was during the World Cup in 82 with Paolo Rossi. I just love the fact that he talked mm. about, you know, goals and being a poacher. I just love the way that Rossi scored goals from two yards. I think was, that, that's just an amazing talent. Despite the fact it looks easy, it's a talent. But I suppose the one player that I always kind of idolised as a kid was Mark Hughes at Man United. He's just, he's just an, an amazing player. And if obviously the, the, the generation that are watching this now probably think, who's Mark Hughes? Just go on YouTube, put in Mark Hughes' greatest goals and you'll see some incredible scissor kicks, overhead kicks, headers. And he was just an amazing goal scorer. It wasn't the quickest, but I'm sure the guys will attest to it. He was so physical, so strong. He was a great goal, a scorer of great goals rather than a great goal scorer. I kicked him. I absolutely lashed him once. <laughs> I could not have kicked him any harder. On purpose? Absolutely on purpose. What was the situation? <laughs> well, the situation was I thought I broke my foot. I mean, this guy was <laughs> this guy was made of granite. I am telling you, I lashed him big time. And I thought I broke my foot, and he just trotted away. <laughs> <Different hour down. laughs> there you have it. All right, I think that's all the questions we've got for uh, extra time here. Our thanks to Stuart and Mark Ogden. Always great to be with you guys. And a reminder, ESPN FC, back on your screens tomorrow. Plenty to discuss on a busy weekend in world football.